Hello, welcome to Hearts of Vintage. My name is Jonathan. This is episode six on the road to verify. This is a series where we started a brand new shop. We started with 200 pounds, new PayPal, new bank account, new everything. And we're gonna start from the very, very beginning, build this shop up until the point where we're Depop verified. To be Depop verified, you need to sell at least 50 items a month with a value of 15 pounds or more, or over 2000 pounds a month for four consecutive months. Then you'll get your blue tick, and at that point you should be earning enough money to decide whether this is a job or this is a lifestyle or a living that you want to pursue. We have our box of new stock. It arrived this morning. I'm gonna unbox this and kind of talk about the previous week. So first up, we have an Alesh track top. Nice track top. Over the past week, we've only sold one or two items. Um, again, I keep saying this, but it is still February. Uh, Adidas T, uh, and we had an off. We had somebody ask about a bundle price. Now I put together a fairly reasonable price. The, the bundle came to, I think it was eighty quid, and I said he could have it for seventy quid shipped. He then ignored me, <laughs> so obviously he wasn't very happy with that. But there were three of our better items, and I didn't really want to reduce them any further. I, I'm fairly sure he was hoping to get one of them for free, and on the premium stuff, it wasn't happening. If there was two good ones and a not so great one i would have done the not so great one for free probably just to get rid of it however he wanted three premium items and he wasn't willing to take the 13 14 discount which i had offered uh, another nice adidas tea this is good stuff this is the kind of stuff we want going ahead um early or late 90s silver tag nike nice size well i say nice size because it's my size <laughs> Uh, Ralph Lauren polo shirt, nice summery one. Kappa polo. What is this? It's uh, Adidas Originals. I'm guessing 2010 ish. 2012. Women's hoodie with a big, big uh, trefoil graphic on the front. Uh, more Adidas track pants. These are starting to get popular. I'm noticing the views on these going up quite a lot. We actually have at the minute over £90 on hold. I think we have just under £100 on hold. We've only got about 12 quid left in the bank, which is enough to kind of cover any postage. We are due some money to be released. However, there is an issue with some of the stuff we have on hold. Uh, the Tommy, was it the Tommy shirt? It was a Tommy shirt that we sold. It went second class, large letter, and we sent it signed for. It's worth noting that if you send something second class and it's a small parcel, you will get a reference number which will confirm delivery of the item. However, smaller stuff like t-shirts and shirts, you need to make sure they're sent tra um, signed for. Otherwise, there's no confirmation at all. Now, we sent it signed for, as we should have. We've not The guy's not message saying it's not arrived, but the tracking and the, there's, no, uh, there's no delivery confirmation yet. So we don't actually know if that's arrived. Um, I assume it has, but we've not had any feedback. Now, we could mess him and chase him. However, I don't really like doing that. Now, it is probably good practice to do it, because if there is a problem, you can start looking into it. However, with Royal Mail, at the minute, you can't chase anything up for at least 28 days after dispatch. So, kind of no real point rushing into it just yet. We'll, if it is lost, we'll handle that when it comes up. If he has received it, great. Um, he's probably just not left feedback. But it's something we want to keep an eye on going forward. We have Adidas Originals with a black tag. That's new. Fortunately, the zip zipper uh, trefoil is missing. But I haven't seen a black tag like this before. Hmm. No inner tags either. One to check on. And actually, this leads us into a question we got. How do we price something if we can't find anything similar to it to kind of gauge your price on, if it's so unique? Um, there are a few things you can do. There are, what I find actually very useful is eBay. If you put in the item type in eBay, so Adidas Original, and kind of go through the items on eBay to see if there's anything with a similar look or a similar tag. Um, if you can't find it currently listed, if you go to the search options at the bottom left, you can actually click on sold items. It'll show com sold and completed sales for the last six months. Um, and you can actually search what items have been sold that way. There's also the Vintage Fashion Guild. 
the Vintage Fashion Guild is a website. It's not the best updated, to be fair. It's kind of out of date. However, for a lot of older brands, there is actually a tag and label resource guide on there. There's also a, a fur resource guide. Lots of resource guides for different parts of the vintage scene. Um, if you still can't find what you're looking for, then it's just kind of down to what you think it's worth. If it's a sweater, you're not going to put it up for 100 quid. But if it's really funky, you might want to put it up for 50, 60 quid and see what happens. Because if it is really funky, somebody might still pick it up for that much. We have a, another, another Adidas Essential Performance. It's quite new again, 2010. But again, another nice hoodie. Heading into spring, all this stuff is really, really good. A modern night hoodie. Vented sides, is it? Vented sides, so breathable. Slip pockets. Nice stuff. Ooh, ooh. Oh, it's more modern. Still, that is cool. I just like the yellow stuff. I don't know if you've picked up on that. But that is a nice uh, track top again. Oh, they really kind of uh, done themselves on this one. Really did. The tag's been cut out, but I'm fairly sure it's a 90 silver tag with big Adidas Athletics down the front. Let's have a look if there's anything on the inside to kind of give away what it might be. Yep, there you go. 90s one, 90s tags on it. That's a nice, nice, I keep saying nice. I, I like it. <laughs> and last but not least in this box, early 2000s women's. Something about it doesn't seem right. Let's have a look if we've got the inside tags to confirm anything. Small chance this is fake. High chance this is fake. The Adidas toggles are actually pretty cool. If we could take that off and put it on the other one, that would work out quite nicely. But I don't know if you've got to see this. The trefoil is very badly stitched. Very badly stitched. Um, there's no inner tag on the lower tags. And the upper tag isn't straight. So this is probably fake. So this is going to have to go, I think, into the rework pile. It's not something we'd be able to sell online. It'll be clearly called out as fake. Easy to miss. It does look genuine on the front. But when you actually look deeper at it, yeah, it, you can even feel it. It doesn't feel quite right. Which is a bit of a sad note to end this box on. But still, plenty of profit to be had in here. Considering this cost, what was it, 70 quid plus for that. Uh, 84 quid so there's like 80 odd quid you've got 20 40 60 80 100 120 140 no it's not 120 yeah it's 140 170 80 90 200 220 a minimum of 220 return on 80 quid and some of this stuff should go pretty quickly. So I'm happy with this box. All this stuff will be listed on the How to Vintage page over the next couple of days. Um, so yeah, so what's next? Next really is just a case of getting this listed, trying to get that money released as quick as possible. A good chunk of that money is held up with that in, uh, international customer. So we, at the minute we are still playing this waiting game. But we continue with our bumping. We continue with all the other stuff we've got going on. Now I mentioned previously that I was gonna talk about kind of like my history with doing this. Pardon me, and I think that's still probably a good thing to talk about. And today might just be the day. Uh, so just a very brief overview. I actually started reselling electronics. I worked at uh, Curry's of all places quite a long time ago. <laughs> it wasn't even called Curry's back then. Um, and I actually worked as a in a concession stand, I actually work for a mobile phone company inside a Curry's. And nobody went to the Curry's where they sold washing machines to buy mobile phones. It just wasn't a thing. So I spent most of my days bored, twiddling my thumbs, doing nothing. Uh, I was my own boss in there. Um, I didn't have a manager in there. And I was managed by the people in the store. 
So I could basically just sit around. And what I found going through all the system files one day is the clearance list. So I went through the clearance list and found all this stuff that was 99p. So I went around the shop, found all this stuff, and I bought it all for 99p because why not? Um, and then when I got back home, I looked on eBay, and this stuff was selling for 20, 30, 40 quid a piece. So I started selling it. Now, at this time, my housemate was a bit older than I am. He was getting into uh, vintage clothes. Uh, he, was, he was really liking like 70s feeler and he was buying a lot of 70s feeler but the sizing is just off so he, he wanted to get rid of it because he paid good money for the stuff um, so I helped him resell it back on eBay fast forward a couple of years he's quit his job he's now buying and selling vintage um, and he's found wholesalers in the UK uh, vintage wholesale company up in Hull actually who are they going to next week to get my cowboy boot stock so it kind of escalated from there. Um, fast forward a couple of years, I'm now working with him, or for him rather, um, and we're selling a lot of vintage. We've got proper model in, big eBay store. Uh, we're doing really, really well. Uh, we're actually buying and selling a lot of barbers back then. Now he decided he wanted to, didn't want to live in England anymore, which is fair. So he moved abroad, um, and I kind of just. This was never truly my passion. I've kind of grown to love the business, opposed to having the passion coming into it. And I just basically kept it as a hobby while doing other jobs, working in fields that I thought I might be more interested in. But I always kept coming back to this, and I kept coming back to it. And my journey through vintage has been one of perseverance and constantly stopping and starting. I've always known about the stuff because I've always, you know, you talk to your friends all this, about this stuff all the time. So especially when you've got a friend who does this full time anyway, it's generally the topic. Look at this cool stuff I got. Nice. That's cool. How do you know what this is? And your knowledge and stuff kind of repeats and learns and you learn from the mistakes. I've made so many mistakes buying stupid stuff, buying bales on impulse that I shouldn't have bought and just, just, uh, just like yeah just making lots of silly mistakes um but through all those mistakes i've learned all the better ways of doing things what you should be looking for what i should be looking for um so i went full time back in 2014 ish now things went really well we had a really good shop we were actually doing really well on ebay um but due to some personal issues uh some family stuff outside of the company I wasn't able to focus on it as much as I liked and it kind of fell apart and at that point I was just like I don't need the stress anymore however when you're unemployed and you're trying to find a job around school hours it's pretty difficult and I found myself I tell you what it was I went to a car boot and I had 20 quid and that's all I had and I was like I'm gonna spend this 20 quid on some stuff I know I can get a return on because at this point if you think of like if you think of it like the company is gone I was trying to find a job. I was literally on unemployment, trying to find a job. And I was just like, I need to increase my income again because this this isn't going to last. I'm really, I thought finding a job would be a lot easier. So I went to the car boot with my 20 quid and I picked up, I think it was a pair of Levi's, a Levi jacket and a Burberry shirt, a denim shirt. And the Burberry denim shirt sold for 40 quid within two days. Um, the Levi jacket sold for 40 quid in a couple of days. So I actually went back to the car boot the next week um, and I just took another 20 quid and I kept that money separate and I took another 20 quid and bought more stuff and just started rotating and rotating from there. So when it comes to starting out, you don't necessarily have to buy a box like this. You can start out by having five or 10 quid, 20 quid, 30 quid, whatever it is, go to the charity shops, go to car boots and slowly but surely, you know, obviously you're starting way down like, you know, we started kind of quite far in. We started up with 200 quid at this shop. But you can start as far back as 5, 10 quid. It's just going to take you that bit longer to get to this point. Now, the point where, at, where we are at now is the point where we are nearly buying stock every week. We're buying a 5 kilo box nearly every week. Maybe every week and a half. Um, we could, have, if this money released, we could buy another box straight away. So we're in a really good place. I know it looks like we've only sold 13 items, but those 13 items have allowed us now to build up to the point where we have over 50 items listed. 
the more items we have listed, the more eyes we're bringing in. So this is like really, really good. We're actually doing really well. And if you think of it from the point of view of you need 50, uh, 50 items a month um, for four months to get verified, in our first month, we we're already at 13 items. That's really, really good. Now, when we head into March, we're gonna wanna push that. We're gonna wanna push that to 20 items, maybe even 25, 30 items. And once that kind of, uh, once that, so I said put it, once that thing triggers, once it happens and it starts moving, it starts snowballing really quick and it starts moving quicker and quicker and quicker. So right now, we're gonna stick with the current plan. The current plan is working really well. If you do have any questions, please ask in the comments below and I'll answer them, but we'll also look at answering them in the next video. So hopefully uh, this has been of interest to you. Hopefully you've, um, they've got something from this. My name is Jonathan. This is The Road to Verified, and I'll see you in episode seven.